Well, hello, 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 everybody. Another lazy day for me today, but I've kind of just embraced it and enjoyed myself and ex accepted that sometimes it might be nice to do something like that. Uh, but yeah, so today we've got a cool stream. We're going to be getting all the golds um, in the adventures for Path of Fire, which should be very fun. Right now, I'm sitting here uh, just waiting for a couple of mo months to ding by in Stellaris during the pre-show while I get my coffee and stuff. In fact, if, hold on, if I turn on my desktop audio... You guys hear that? That's the sound of my empire, the very latest stage of a gal galaxy. I'm basically waiting. I'm wasting loads of time so that I can um, build a ring world and get a very specific achievement before I start a new campaign and maybe start modding it and stop using Iron Man mode and stuff. But yeah, anyway, yeah, I I'm just waiting for that a little bit, getting some coffee. It will be a regular intro and it's good to see you all and we'll do some fun stuff. Uh, it should be pretty cool. I, I think today, what did we do yesterday? NA? I think we'll do NA again today. Because unlike the other streams, the meta zerginess should be a little bit less important. I mean, we can retry the Vabby meta, but it might be better to do that not on this stream, but one later and then give EU a shot at it or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, it should be fun, guys, and I'll see you in there. Let's do it.
All right, I got my coffee. How is it going, guys? Oh, I should probably talk about this on Discord and things. I'll oh, screw it. People will find their way that they are way here. Hello, everybody. Hope we're all doing good. Uh, Blade Fistol says, oh, everybody's so obsessed with this. Uh, WP, you done with the Griffin? Are you going to stream it? Uh, no, I've I haven't made any progress on the Griffin the past few days, none whatsoever. Uh, but I, I I'm pretty I'm getting close to it, I believe. Um. But yeah, am I going to stream it? Once I get it, yeah, I'm going to do a mount spotlight and all that good stuff. Fast intro. Was this particularly fast today? I think it only reset a couple of times. I don't know. Sometimes, obviously, we're we're a bit slower with it. Uh, Balth potato out of the way now. It's time for mount potato. Did somebody submit me a mount potato and I missed it? Really? I have a few Discord messages. Let's see. Oh, no, I don't want to... I don't, I don't like clicking Discord messages during streams. Because then it's no longer flagged for me to go back to, and I know I'll forget about it. And I'm not going to give anyone a worthwhile response midstream, so I can't just chance it and click through. Um, I have a horse potato on right now. Yeah, I know I have a horse potato on right now. We put this on yesterday. I, I really like this face cam. I really do. I think this is a good one. You thought you'd seen me flying around on it. Guess not. I have flown around on... Not that... You can... You can uh, sort of preview the griffin before you properly own it and train it as a mastery you will have seen me do that several times i've been doing that for a long time so i have flown the griffin but i don't have the masteries which are what really makes the movement very different and excel and so on so uh wp how do you feel about the new guild hall compared to the old ones me and my guild swapped from the lost precipice to the new one but we switched back shortly after uh i mean I don't really have any thoughts. I think it's, uh, well, I have some. I guess it's a smaller guild hall, so... Well, no, it's not a smaller guild hall. I refuted that yesterday, and I refuted that today. I don't know whether it's really a smaller guild hall, but it's more central. It's services and stuff. So, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Some people will look at that as some kind of a negative quality, but I think that's an incredibly uh, juvenile way of seeing things. I think that smaller halls are worthwhile in the game, and just because this one might be smaller or more central or whatever, I think that that's fine. Um, and yeah, I think that just because it comes with the new expansion, it does, it's not necessarily better. That it will feel more exciting for the moment that you originally get it, because it's got like that new shine to it. But it doesn't mean that it's, you know, and, and it's not a failure if it, if it doesn't reach that aim either, right? Like if the new guild hall, if you end up after tr sampling the new guild hall and join the Lost Precipice more and you go back, I, I don't think that's a, there's anything interesting really. I think that's just par for the course and that's fine. Um, for me, I'm, 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 we're still uh, building up. So yeah, on yesterday's stream, we spent our Ethereum to extend our storage. And so 24 hours later, you can see we now have 1,330 Ethereum. So that's the kind of rate that we're getting at. That actually feels really fast to me, incredibly fast. So it might actually be super cool for us to go back there now. Now, I, d I decided to play my Scourge today, um, who I haven't played for a little while, but I thought I'd play Scourge on the stream. Uh, we're going to be doing, um... Uh, the adventures we're gonna go around uh, all except the the griffin ones obviously because I don't have those yet but uh, we're gonna do the adventures and um, I suppose it doesn't really matter therefore what class I'm on uh, but I thought it'd be fun to do that so what we'll do is I'm gonna fly to the hall and we're gonna spend that ethereum on the next upgrade as long as people dedicated to the treasury already, which I don't know if they did. At the very least, we might be able to start the workshop, or we might be able to go a little bit further with the tavern. The way I like to do these things is, um... Or, I, I say that like I do it all the time. I guess in other games, there's similar situations. But, uh, what I did with the previous hall was I finished off the buildings I had, or went as far as I could with the buildings that I had, before then moving on to the next, and then before then me, instead of do, like doing this medley where you get them all at once. And what that does is that paces out the big animations of the stuff being built more. Um, so yeah, we, we, we'll see how we do this. Uh, I've just realised you guys are looking at the goddamn thing the whole time here we go gameplay sorry i've actually been playing and gesturing and showing you things with the mouse the whole time <laughs> but uh not you guys haven't been seeing it so there you go now we're in game i'm, I'm flying there now sorry guys mccoy 58 says uh yes finally caught a wp stream that's cool dude it's nice to see you uh, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Hello as well to Rolski RS. It's very early here, so we're just sort of getting started. Uh, WP, how do you feel? Oh god, I've, I've scrolled up so far, I got back to the same question already. Um, let me scroll up even further if there's something else that I missed during the pre-show. Uh, this is the first time in like four months I've been able to make your Twitch. I'm crying tears of joy. It's been four months, fella? 
No. I mean, you must have been... I must have been interacting or seeing your name in some other capacity, though. Right? Four months since you've been here at, on a stream. That's crazy. Adian's here as well. Cream cheese and raspberry danish with a cup of coffee. Good stuff. Dude. Cream cheese and raspberry. I love danish pastries. My God. Like, um... And, and, and all stuff in that variety. Would you consider, like, a cinnamon swirl? A danish pastry? I would. But then, what, what other? There's, like, crowns, right? Like a raspberry crown... Or, um, uh, oh god, what are they called? A pecan plat? Yeah, pecan plat? Man, I used to make all these things. Seriously, I used to, I used to actually be okay at it. Um, sadly, I don't have anything of that sort. I just have instant coffee here. You have a glass of pineapple juice? Dude, that's also pretty cool. I haven't had that for a long time. Man, I haven't had, like, good fruit juice like that for ages. I remember, I mentioned this very recently, this is weird, I don't know why this is on my mind so much. I mentioned it very recently, uh, on a recent stream, when I went to Dubai. When I went to Dubai, I have these very striking memories of their fridge, of the people I was staying with when I went there. And they had all these amazing fruit juices, like, this was, I believe this was the first time I really had cranberry juice. Um, I was like 14 or 15. Uh, and they had, yeah, oh man, yeah, having a, like, uh, to me, being a good adult is having a, a fridge full of a variety of things like that. That's the good stuff, man. But, like, unless you've got a big family, you kind of can't buy in bulk that kind of liquid too much because the the, the, t the amount of time it would take you to get through it, it'll start going off. Unless you buy, like, little... But, you know, like, you get the two-litre cartons. Oh, boy, they're good. Has instant coffee gotten good when I was a kid? It was disgusting. No, it's not very nice. No coffee is particularly nice to me, though, despite the fact I've heard myself drinking it a bit. I'm still not, like... Very well acclimated to the bitterness of it. So. <sighs> sorry, sorry if I made anybody else yawn as well. There, yeah, it's not, it's not all that good, honestly. But uh, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Let's get some audio going for you guys. Um, and I'm not really a snob about these things, really. Uh, there is a problem with your competition. I can't submit my entry because the form does not allow a space in the account name, but mine has one. Yeah, I did tell Welk about this a long time ago. Um, I can't remember what came of that conversation. Uh, because it's it's a it's a weird and scary problem because uh, lots of people to get around that will have just given me their account name without a space. And I'm really scared of any of those people winning right now. Because if one of those people wins, I can't easily... It's going to be like so much just fucking hassle to go through, you know, 500, 600 different... Oh, it's just... I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I feel like it's a nuke that's about to go off on my face, actually. The end of this competition, I really do. Because, like, the judging, and I just, I'm scared. I'm very scared. Uh, but listen, for now, you can try and message Welk about it. Or you can, uh, just submit without a space. And we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Whoever puts sugar or milk in their coffee should be put to the sword. Well, I don't really have sugar or milk. Actually, I don't like milky coffee anymore. I used to like milky coffee, but I don't like it anymore, which is really weird to hear myself say. Um, but what's wrong with sugar in coffee? Come on, man. Sweetener in, in coffee? What a weird thing to be fanatical about. I put flavoured creamer in my coffee. See, that sounds, that sounds very posh to me. Ew, I have creamer with my coffee. I know it's not posh. Um, Wilde says it's the first time that you've heard it. I'll question mark, I'll fix this. Dude, I swear we had a conversation about it. Listen, we'll talk about it on Discord after the stream if you like. It's not a big deal. You've already heard the whole story. I'm sure I messaged you about it. It was a long time ago. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure we talked about it. Uh, but yeah, I, and I don't know what we can do retroactively, really, Wilde, uh, about it either. Because, you know, a lot of people have submitted and... Coffee gives you stomach pains, Inks. Really? It gives you stomach pains? That's interesting. How many of these streams... What? This is weird, isn't it? This is kind of terrible. How many of my streams have just been me flying around POF? It doesn't give the impression that I'm very eager to get into the content, does it? Because I'm literally... But it's uh, I'm getting all my alts very slowly through it, you see. It's kind of a useful way... All the alts that I'm streaming on. It's a useful way of, do, of doubling up, right? This is something that's efficient. Is this dynamic weather? It is. It sometimes isn't raining here. In fact, I'm sure you can find another very recent stream where I am flying through here and it's uh, not raining at all. Um, an obvious perk of this weird sort of situation I've been in. I can't remember. I think I'm on apothecaries on this. So we'll see how this goes, I guess. 
There we go, they're dead. Cheeky little one-two tap. Now, I have bleeding on me for a long ass time. It's a bit annoying. We will wait. Oh, was the Springer's animations bugged there? WP, there's no content in POF. Don't you read the forums? Oh, my mistake. My mistake. You know, one thing that struck me a lot recently. Um, this is not a criticism of ArenaNet or, or, or Path of Fire, but it's an observation, okay? Um, but because I've been playing Divinity, right, recently, it's really struck me how... And, you know, so, so to, to set the scene, we talk a lot about how Guild Wars 2 feels a lot smaller than Guild Wars 1. Tick for tap. Uh, tip for tap, what am I saying? You know, uh, beat for beat, place to place. Um, and it's often that the scale isn't that different, but the gameplay is so different, right? Um, and the speed you move and your incentive and requirement to participate in combat and what you're rewarded for and uh, the amount you teleport around and all of these things, right? Like, it's a, it, to paint the complete picture is actually to talk about a huge number of different moving parts in the gameplay between the two games and it, it makes the scale of the games feel very different you know i'm playing a uh, divinity original sin 2 at the moment and to one thing that's been on my mind a lot that furthers this whole thing um is you know there was a post on their subreddit right where it took someone 31 hours to get off of the first map of that game fort joy 31 hours um, and I just last night, there's sort of different levels of getting out of Fort, Fort Joy, but last night I properly got off of Fort Joy. Anyone who's played the game will know what I'm talking about. But it took me 24 hours exactly to get off of the first map. It took me 24, and these, there was this Reddit thread about them taking 31. 24 hours. And once you've explored the full first map, you realize, like, in terms of, like, environments you go through and places you visit, it's really not that much. Like, it's a tiny little pinpoint. It's the teeniest little thing. Com and compared to Guild Wars 2, compared to this, what we're running through here, it's amazing how much content and meaningful content you get out of such a small play space in Divinity just because the gameplay is so different. You know, it's it's almost incomparable to Guild Wars 2 in a lot of ways, gameplay. But, um, you know, it means that the smallest areas, essentially, that they've created to uh, explore... Uh, with so much less con you know, it's not like there's that many quests now the quests themselves have got crazy branches and loads of dialogue and stuff So again, the comparisons are a little bit thick and weird to talk about but It's amazing and it, you know, I find myself thinking wow What if there was like a Guild Wars equivalent of this, you know in 24 hours of Path of Fire you could it, It's not just the first map It's like you could have four different characters having finished the entire story kind of thing and and, and when I say story, I don't just mean story instances. I, I mean getting all the mounts and doing all the masteries and everything, really. Um, and map completion and so on. 24 hours, you're completely exhausted. While over in Divinity, it's like this little island you explore. It's a tiny island. It's like, you know, it's like taking 24 hours to beat Claw Island in Guild Wars 2, right? It really is. And it's amazing how, you know, I find that so fascinating to look at. Just the way that these, uh, they're both RPGs, right? So they're comparable on that level. The way that these these experiences are structured and how differently you can and so when you and so to go back to the stream you started me uh, off here by saying you know on the forums they say there's no content it's really weird because it's like so often that's like a juvenile way of looking at it. it's not actually content that we're talking about right like it's how content is presented and the speed of us getting through the content and our excitement at you know, and all these kinds of things. So it's really, really, really interesting to look at because uh, comparatively, Guild Wars 2 is so much bigger. Path of Fire is so much bigger than DOS 2. Way bigger. So much more. But the, it's the, the pace of the game and the speed we play at and so on. Anyway, I, find, I found that quite... And I've been thinking about that a lot. Especially because I've, I've had hovering around in my mind for a while. Uh, you guys will know. I've talked about a few things that I would love for the Guild Wars 1 scene. Um... And, like, these ideas of could they just have a handful of devs that go and develop for Guild Wars 1 and they put out, like, a pittance of content. But because you know it's coming, people keep the game installed and, and so on and all these things. But one of these other ideas that we've talked about before of keeping life in Guild Wars 1 is uh, is kind of opening it up and releasing, like, modding tools for people and letting people host their own servers and stuff. Um, and, you know, I can imagine a Guild Wars 1 top down -y, especially because toolbox, toolbox, right? You can dislocate the camera. You can make the game feel like a strategy game with Toolbox. It's so weird. But, you know, especially with Toolbox and messing with the camera, I can imagine like a top down total conversion mod thing of Guild Wars 1 that, you know, tells its story, a different story and stuff, you know. 
uh, that would feel a lot like Divinity. And, you know, that's what Guild Wars 1 was so different because the, the content was paced differently. All right, we can go... Up, I'm rambling big time here. We can go up to the Guild Hall here. Um, so, sorry, what's this here? Is Waldir said something? Uh, Ink says, as awesome as mounts are, I think they've allowed people to complete content at such a pace that some people are running out of content. I mean, the thing is, it's not new for Guild Wars. Guild Wars, to me, has always been this battle. We're going to be really nice to you, and we're going to make everything super easy and, and, and accessible, and we're always going to give you shortcuts, and we don't care too much about immersion or, or, or slow paces or pace breakers. We're going to make it as comfortable and fast and easy as possible, because that's the anti-MMO philosophy, and people are looking for that in their MMOs. And, and you know, that's at the core of Guild Wars, and the, 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 the struggle, the beauty, really, from a design perspective, I guess, of Guild Wars, is watching it struggle with the consequence of that freedom, yeah? That's always been at the heart of Guild Wars. Every discussion you've ever seen about grind to get legendary weapons, to get grind in, in legendary armor, to gate legendary armor behind raids, to... Uh, to anything, honestly, any kind of, m most discussions you ever find, I think balance are the only discussions that escape from this. At the heart of Guild Wars 2 and t Guild Wars 2's turmoil is this, like, this thing that's baked in, right? It's baked into it, into the experience. Um, people want things to be easy. People want things to be fast. But then the consequence is you run out of stuff to do very quickly, to put that as, as bluntly as possible. And, um... Giving people meaningful long-term experiences while also being as friendly as possible to them and respecting their time as much as possible, that's kind of, you know, it's at odds with itself. And that's the challenge that the devs have set themselves. That's what's at the heart, that's, that's what the heart that Guild Wars 2 beats with. Do you, am I being a bit too um, abstract on this, do you guys think? Or do you think, it, or do you kind of get what I'm saying here? Anyway, so here's the mine. Let's see if she's got an upgrade for us. No, she doesn't. Now, we do have the... No, we don't have the Ethereum for it. We do have the favor. So, if we want deeper mining rate, we need to be level 5 anyway. So, none of that's even possible. And people haven't uh, submitted any of the uh, the materials. So, let's go to another building and see what else we can do. Um, do you consider Divinity Original Sin to be hard or easy? I think if you play on Tactician mode, it can be a very hard game. Um, I think... Uh, the difficulty for me is, like, perfectly balanced. Uh... And when I say that, I mean, like, every fight is, like, super exciting. Like, each turn that goes, you think you've got it in the bag, and then they'll turn it around on you, and then you're like, uh, and you'll you'll cry in, in frustration as one of your characters dies, and you have to spend a red scroll to get them back up. But I, I, I love it. I think it's, it's so, so, so good. And uh, minor spoilers for Divinity Original Sin 2, guys. Minor spoilers. But the final boss as you leave Fort Joy, you're fighting the final boss, and he's got a companion that's this devastating, scary creature, and you're like, holy shit. And then in the middle of the fight, a third ridiculous creature spawns from the void, and then it's like a three-way battle all at once. It's so hype. It's so good. It's a great game. Uh, and that's how I felt from Divinity Original Sin as well. I love those games. I really do. I think they're so good. Um, and in terms of difficulty, they're right up my alley. Not that I'm playing on tactician mode. I'm just playing standard experience. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I just realized I can watch my fa I can't watch my favorite streamer anymore. Have a nice one, though. Wavy, you big fractal elitist kappa. No! I guess you saw yesterday's VOD where we were discussing whether it's okay to leave a fractal without saying goodbye to people. A bit of a... <laughs> A, a, a boring topic, I I grant you. I'm sorry, man. It's a minor spoiler because it's the final boss of the first map, so that's what I'm I'm saying. It can be both a minor boss and a, a minor spoiler and a bit and a you know an important boss fight. Um, right. What am I doing? I'm trying to find the person over here. I thought we could have another, like, discussion thing as well, prompted by a comment today. I like that on the streams, guys. I thought we could do another one. So I'm going to read you a comment in a minute that was uh, bestowed to me upon YouTube. And we won't, we, we will anonymize it again, as we always do. And I want to hear your reactions, okay, guys? And I think, I want your reactions to it because I know that people are going to be really split on it. Um, because you've got, like, well, we, you'll see when we get there. You'll see. You'll see. Right. What am I doing? I'm messing about here. Let's go into this building over here. I still don't know this hall too well. It's cool, though. 
W, uh, Wardy says, what do you think about the lack of CC on the new Elite Specs? I like it. I, I do like it because I think that, um, I think it will teach people who look at like QT benches and they go, oh my God, we need everybody to be on Weavers. Ah! And then they all run their Weavers or they all run, even if they're smart enough to go quality of life DPS builds, right? Um, like they stack a ton of firebrands and stuff. Uh, they'll do that, and then they'll play a fight like like Samurog, and they'll be like, "Oh fuck, we're we're DPSing him so hard, but we have no CC." And this is actually really annoying. Or Sloth as well is another good example. And they'll be like, "Oh, this is really annoying." And then it's teaching people to engage their own brains and think for a second. Oh, hold on, maybe DPS isn't. You know, m maybe tunnel visioning into these specific builds isn't everything. Maybe I can engage my own brain. Maybe I will run it this build instead because it has a bit more CC on there. And encouraging raiding groups amongst themselves to think intelligently about the game and tech on choices for different bosses. I think that's really important for the pugging scene. And I, uh, this is what my um, discussion here is about. Because I think that starts to cut away at the uh, the incredible, like dogmatic, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, the pugging seems very do or die, right? Very discriminatory, very binary in its decisions about things and how it views builds. And I think by having released an elite, and I don't think this was on purpose by the devs for what it's worth, but I think that we're kind of lucky in that it's got so little CC because everyone using the new specs that not, can do the lot of damage, it's, it should open up people's minds. It should broaden their perspectives a little bit. And I, I like that. Uh, beyond that, I, and that's only a minor point I'm making there, um, and I'm not saying it's a particularly good point, but uh, yeah. Alright, so we need level 5 for this as well, and this and this. So I guess our only choice is to build um, the workshop. So we're going to see a building here, guys. Uh, does anybody want to come in-game and see this then? Here, look, I'll squad up for these adventures, and at the end of the stream... We will we'll build the workshop. We'll approve this upgrade on the workshop. Um, which we're ready for. Oh, no, we're not ready for. We need a little bit more Ethereum. Maybe by the end of the stream we'll have this Ethereum? I don't know, though. We're a little bit shy. Mm, maybe in two hours we will have 150 more Ethereum. I don't know what the rate is, the default rate. But we will see. Not even two hours, like an hour and a half, actually. All right, so anyway, if you do later want to see that and be here in person as that happens, there's a squad here for you all. I'm going to turn the kitty cat off. We're going to go to that because it, mat it matches my outfit. Oh. All right, cool. So um, I've already done some of these adventures, but I'm going to I'm going to redo them just to stream them all because I don't think I've streamed all of them. So we're going to start with the first one at Amnoon. Now, this discussion. Well, hold on. Let's see if anybody's got any responses before I do that. Um... I don't understand. If it doesn't do the absolute best damage, it must be a wor uh, worthless build, Kappa. Yeah, you said it, Beta at Asex. Sounds like you're pretty clued in there. Uh, my discussion a second ago wasn't really about QT. I, ha I, ha I have no ill will for QT whatsoever. I think it's great that they do what they do for the community. I think we're blessed that one of the guilds out there does it for the community. And I think they do try... Tr they could try harder, obviously. Uh, but I think they do try to g encourage people to have open minds and so forth. But, you know, I don't think all of the backlash is on them. Well, as I've said before, I view them as like a newspaper, you know. It's like checking the stocks as they come in. And I want an more guilds to step up to the plate. But I get that they're probably a bit intimidated and they might not get much traction um, from the, the broader community for a long time. But, you know, we've seen some shifts. I believe, uh, you know, for a long time in the dungeon days, it was uh, D&T were the people that everybody looked to more than anything else, you know. And then that sort of dived away for all those reasons and so on, which I don't really know or care about. But, um, And then we saw sort of QT become a bigger thing. But, you know, there's been lots of guilds that you could look at. I just want people to more prominently look at more. Uh, what were the chance of you being a, doing a surprise of any original Sin stream? Very, very low. I'm sorry, Insomniatic. Uh, I'll talk about it here, but it's more of a just... It's not a it's not a wooden potatoes thing to, thing to me. It's just a me thing. Like, I, I sort of decided earlier in the year that I want... I want parts of my life that are not fully absorbed by always being about YouTube and Twitch and so forth. Uh, you know, it, like, I, like I played a lot of Crash Bandicoot. I played a lot of uh, Uncharted this year. I played... Ugh, I wish I could say I played more FF15, but I played so little of that in the end and I need to get back to it. I don't have a TV or anything right, right now set up, so I can't play any PS4 stuff in the moment. But, you know, and I'm happy to have done those things. Um, anyway, right, so it doesn't look like we had too much. Any idea why we aren't seeing more scourge builds that focus on barrier? I feel like it could 
make for really smooth. Well, yeah, I've, I've played a little bit of Fractals with Scourges, and I like the bit of barrier, but unfortunately, it's not been a big thing for the game. It's just like another little quality of life thing that you can have. Um... You know, I view access to a bit of barrier in your fractal comp. I view on the same level of usefulness as having access to uh, semi-frequent blinds being pulsed out or weakness. Well, weakness is pretty big. Protection is pretty big. Pulls are pretty big. So I don't know. But yeah, it's like it's like just an extra thing now on that list of, you know, the more of these tools you get on your comp, the more comfortable things are. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, I actually think fractals are too easy. We got so many tools now. I think that they're too easy to be smooth. And I've always been an advocate of, or for a long time I've been an advocate of, what we currently experience as T4 difficulty should be shifted to T3 to make space for something that's genuinely a bit more challenging uh, at T4. And rewards can, you know, shift along the line just fine so that nobody complains. Uh, but Alright, so discussion. I'm going to read out a comment from my YouTube comment section, guys. Everybody sit up and listen. I want to hear your opinions on this, please. So, here we go. Um, and because I'm reading this comment, I'm not, uh, you know, staking one way or the other on this. But it was interesting. It's a comment on one of my videos. It's a comment about mounts that could be coming into the game. And, uh, in particular, one mount was discussed that the devs revealed... Uh, and was data mined to have been revealed, actually, I think, was more the thing. Which is a Spider-Man. <coughs> Here's the comment. What do we think? As a person who has arachnophobia, I despise every moment I have to confront a giant spider. The small ones are easy to ignore, but giant ones are honestly terrifying. I now people would say my phobias are my own and people like me should not influence the decisions a company makes. But hey, I bought the expansion too. I don't want three, two to three big norms running around on giant spiders. Honestly, if it got common enough, I would consider quitting the game entirely. I really appreciate the fact that ArenaNet is considering every person who plays their game and hopefully they don't add more spiders in it and then we have a cat, a cat face uh, at the end there, a little kitty face, a cute kitty cat face. So, uh, so what? How do we feel about that? Okay. I'll read it once more, a little bit quickly. As a person with arachnophobia, I despise every moment I have to confront a giant spider. The small ones are easy to ignore, but giant ones are honestly terrifying. I know people would say, and I'll, I won't read their typos. I know people would say that my phobias are my own, and people like me shouldn't influence the, dev, uh, uh, the decisions a company makes. But I bought it as well. Uh, I don't want two to three big Norn running around on giant spiders, and if it got common enough, I would consider quitting entirely. I appreciate the fact that they consider every person who plays their game, and hopefully they don't add any more spiders into it, kitty face. All right, so what do we think? So someone in chat says exposure therapy. I thought exposure therapy when I read that as well. That did flash through my mind. But also exposure therapy doesn't work for everyone, right? I believe that's a thing. Uh, so exposure therapy, guys, is like, um, you know, I actually had this with arachnophobia. I was pretty, pretty, I'm still not comfortable around spiders, but I was pretty scared of spiders. And I've talked about this before. There's a guy on YouTube. What's his channel? Uh, what? What is this? Uh, what was it? I can't even remember his channel name anymore. Man, I can't remember his channel name. I watched a YouTube channel about a guy who kept tarantulas. Loads of them. And he was always handling them. And it taught me why people keep them as pets. And the academic appreciation you can have for those kinds of pets. And uh, it really culled away from my, my fear of spiders to a heavy degree. Uh, exposure therapy. I forced myself to face it and I'm no longer scared. So the argument that was expressed to me in Twitch chat here is um, just put them in the game and these people who are scared will have exposure therapy. So there's, there's different levels to that. One is exposure therapy supposedly doesn't work for everyone. And you kind of have to... The, I think the main thing is exposure therapy It can only work if the person like consents to it and psychologically is doing it off their own will. So would exposure therapy work anyway if you just threw it in game? Because that's not the same thing, is it? It's not like the devs asking people's permission and they're all psychologically set up for it. These are just gonna be random arachnophobes walking around seeing sudden big spiders, okay? 
So is exposure therapy enough? Um, <laughs> someone says I'm getting trolled by this guy. I, how am I getting trolled? I might agree with his, his comments. I haven't said I disagree. I'm not necessarily getting trolled. Maybe this is someone who just likes... Uh... So here we go. AFK says, I'm with the guy. Fuck spiders. So uh, what do you guys make of the comment? I appreciate the fact that ArenaNet is considering every person who plays the game. What do we think of that? Like, uh, that's an interesting comment. The context of it is arachnophobia. We can sh change that, but the comment remains. You know, what? A somebody joked, I I'm scared of water. Take all the water out of the game for me. And um, is it not? You know, that, that on the one hand, we have arachnophobes. On the other hand... Uh, we have people who want spider mounts in the game. So is that comment? I like that ArenaNet is appre uh, appreciating everyone. Are they appreciating everyone? Surely to deny the uh, big spiders on the grounds of the people with arachnophobia is to not consider those who want the spider. Is that not an illogical statement to make? Because by catering to one audience, you are not catering to another. They are not appreciating everyone. So what are we saying? Are we saying that uh, negative feelings from one uh, audience are more important to listen to than the positive desires of another audience. Do you get what I mean? How do we come to the decision of who is right and who is wrong? Which audience deserves more? The one with the highest numbers? Or are we going to do this democratically, essentially, right? So which audience is larger? Ara people with arachnophobia or people with a desire for spiders? How do you measure what's more important? How scared someone is versus how happy someone would be? How do, how do, we, how do we figure that out? What is the right discussion here, guys? Zach and Tosh has a, not, has a zero statement, which is, Hey, this person has different feelings than me. They must be wrong, exclamation mark. I think that's a, that doesn't uh, contribute to the discussion anyway, my friend. And I'm not sure who you're directing that at. I hope not me. I'm not saying that the commenter is wrong. WP intentionally reading typos is the new nerd voice. I think that that's a more, uh, maybe, yeah, I do get some satisfaction intentionally reading t typos. I do. I must be honest. But it's not as offensive, so I think it's good. Because I genuinely, when I listen back to myself doing the nerd voice, I don't like who I am. And I understand why people get angry with me. So I'm trying to cut that away. Someone said, get a grip. Oh, MKUL has a different topic and says pre-searing Guild Wars 1 walkthrough on streams someday. Dude, that is the oldest unfinished project on the existence of wooden potatoes. I There is one aspect of Guild Wars 1 you are absolutely right. I never properly touched on beyond, you know, organized PvP and GVGs and stuff. And it was pre-searing, you're right. Maybe one day. Um, so let me scroll down. Let's see what people are saying. It's a video game? What do we guys, what do we think of this? It's a video game, so their arachnophobia doesn't count. Is that, a, is that a strong argument? Just because they're looking at a, a thing on a screen? How far do we take that? What if, it, you know, we're showing some really debauched, disgusting sexual acts? Oh, do we allow those and it, just because it's a video game? How far does that go? Oh, somebody deleted their message. Bro Derek deleted their message. Or did a mod delete that? Were they trolling? A game about dragons bigger than entire cities, but Omga Spider. You know, I think some of you guys need to have a bit more imagination and genuinely put yourself in the position of imagining that you are terrified by this thing in the game. And now, and now we have the discussion once we're at that level. You know what that person needs? They need a nice, neat little snowflake. It's very... I, I, I raised this as a discussion because I thought there'd be more defense for this poor person. But there's not much, is there? You guys just hate on this guy. Uh, Jerovan10 says, I think arachnophobia, as one of the most common, should be considered. So props to ArenaNet here. However, do people with fear of heights have similar reactions to the high places? Good. It, that's interesting. Should they? Were they wrong to add the griffin? Because of... What's that called? A fear of heights. It's got a proper name, doesn't it? You tried exposure therapy with trypophobia. What's trypophobia? How's Scourge going for me? I have a level 80 necro, but God, she sucks. I'm enjoying it. I like it. MMO Inc. says, I used to be scared of chocolate, but after exposure therapy, I now just have diabetes. <laughs> Please remove sharks from Guild Wars as well. Hmm. 
So uh, here's another distinction. Is the distinction to be made? Because there are scary things in the game. There's lots of scary things in the game. There are sharks in the game. There are there are mummies in the game. There are zombies in the game. There, you know, there's undead dragons in the game. What other genu gen generally scary things are there? You know, there's uh, there's not any particular particular like gore in the game. Sure, but I mean, gore to me isn't. I don't know how much that is scary. Gore, gore is only scary with certain contexts. Um, you know, people get murdered in the game and stuff. So why why is there a line drawn in the sand now? And I'm, you know, I'm not just being devil's advocate. Let's really think about it. Why is a line drawn in the sand here? Is it something to do with the fact players are in control of this one? You know, because players, they don't want this. Because the argument I've given before on this is like, it's about how in in everyone's face it would be. So when you attach it to a player, it does become a bigger thing, right? Um... So I don't know. What if I'm scared of like manta rays? I feel like there's a really tasteless Steve Irwin joke here somewhere. What? But what if I'm scared of like you know, manta rays or something, right? Um, all right. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So this is the first adventure, and this is the uh, raptor. I think what we want for this one. So, so we we have to run around grabbing supplies. I've already got gold on this, so we're just gonna go and we're gonna try. Let me get chat up while I'm playing so that I can keep this conversation going. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. As inefficiently as I'm playing here. I think you're all going to find in the end that it doesn't even matter. And I'll probably get gold. Oh, I'm not going to say that I'm going to get gold anyway. Because I'm not. And then I'm going to look like a dickhead. But it is pretty easy to get these. I don't know what the best route is. Um, If you want a spider mount, go play a game that has one. What? So, the, So what's that argument? That argument is... What is that argument? That's a weird... That's a, that, So you're saying... If you want this thing... It's your job to go find it elsewhere. Arena Net aren't beholden to add something you desire. So can we use that logic with a different circumstance to, to you know, reveal some flaws in it? So like... Um, I want a cape, right? I want capes in Guild Wars 2. Is it fair to tell me just go play a different game with capes then? Like, how far does that get? So that's kind of a thing of saying the consumer's desires are irrelevant, right? Because they'll put in the game what they want to put in the game. Everybody should shut up. I mean, that's, that's, that's a perspective. Does that help them as a company? Does it help us as a community? Is that really a good thing to, to line of reason to go down? Hmm. Am I on Euro servers? I'm on NA at the moment. Sorry, I'm on NA. You can't please everyone and it sucks for that guy. Well, no, it's good for that guy. That guy's happy. There are no there are no spiders. It sucks for the uh, spider advocate party. Um, not that I've heard much from them. Oh, God, the raptor's going to die. I'm sorry, Rappy. Oh, he lived with a tiny bit of health. Quag and more terrifying than spiders. The animation team is fully capable of awakening arachnophobia in y'all brave boys. Oh, so there we've just got someone angry that people aren't respecting the fear. Is that what's going on there, Elizabeth92? Uh, it's not about higher numbers, says AFK. Uh, does it hurt you not having a frigging spider man? So there the discussion is, um, and I think this is quite a strong one. I think this is, this is, this is one of the stronger arguments I've heard. This is basically, it doesn't do much damage to not have spiders, but it does do damage to have spiders, spider mounts. Um, adding spider mounts is a fancy to, to one group while it's a, a, a devastation to another. Right? Is that what we're saying? But again, I mean, I kind of touched on that earlier, AFK. And, uh, you know, my point was, okay, so if we're going to go with that, how do, we, how do we quantify those things? How do you actually measure those things? How do you measure the fear of one audience versus the, the pleasure of another? Yeah? You get what I mean? And there's another side of this as well I haven't seen anyone say in chat yet. You know, the reason this discussion comes up is because we know that the devs had made one. 
And they might not have gone the whole way with it. But it's like, um, you know, it, it would be one thing to say, yeah, let's not do it. Let's not spend the resources on it. Because, again, this is always something forgotten by us nerds on the internet. Things take time to make. It, it costs the company time and talent to, to implement things, right? So if we were at a complete default state and a neutral position on this whole thing, what we would say is, yeah, you know, wh why risk it? Is the risk worth, you know, this is a side grade. Everything a dev puts into a game should be dis a discernible upgrade. It should be something good. It should benefit it. You don't revamp a feature just to have something that's different but not discernibly better, right? Like, so if we were at a neutral state, we would simply say, yeah, it's not worth the time to, to introduce that risk because we know we have, there are people with arachnophobia. However, we're not at... And the reason this discussion comes up is because we're not at a neutral state. We're actually in a place where they had made the mount, perhaps not in full, yes, but they had made the mount and then chosen to can those efforts. And that's where the discussion comes from. Because it's no longer, oh, because that, that, that resource is spent now. At least a prototype was made. You get what I mean? And I mean, only ArenaNet themselves, only the dev who made the mount themselves can truly come online and say, yeah, this took me five minutes while I was jerking off and watching Adventure Time. So... Uh, it was just a little fun thing I did in the evening. Don't worry about it, guys. You know, I, without that information, though, there the uh, there in is born the discussion amongst us unwashed masses that don't know what we're talking about. Really, you don't know the full picture. Uh, let's see here. Devs decide whatever they want. Game design isn't a democracy, dude. I, I I'm a big fan of that, by the way. I do not believe in design by numbers at all. For an MMO, it's tricky though because. So look, we got gold. No, we got only got silver on this. I went. I was four seconds away from gold. Um, I guess I'll do it again then and get gold. And the reason I did is because I missed one of the pyramids. So we'll just go again. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I, I'm very much a believer. I, I believe small, uh, you know, um, smaller. Well, not necessarily smaller teams, but um. Products designed with a very specific vision and almost like a dictator of that vision. Do you know what I mean? I actually believe in that very heavily because whether, you know, the game in the end is that marketable or whatever, at least it will be good at, at that thing it was trying to do, you know? And I think that there, there's more chance for artistry and there's more chance for all kinds. So I believe in that. But in an MMO, can design by democracy be denied? Can it? Let's be real here. You've got to get a lot of people playing your MMO. I think negative feelings on the level of a phobia are more important than the positive feelings of a Spider-Man. Okay, that's that's a nice, but that's an intu that's an intuitive feeling you have there. Do you want to substantiate it a little bit further? Give us something more. A nice little extra for people like it versus something that can make the game borderline unplayable for people seems pretty clear cut to me. I mean, and then we go further as well. Okay, so you just declared that it would make it borderline unplayable. I think there's a temptation out there to to question that. Would it make it borderline unplayable? Do we not have giant, horrendous plastic spider tonics bouncing around at Halloween? You know, I like the idea of some furious Spider-Man advocates, right? This Halloween, getting a ton of spider things and, like, organizing a rally in, like, Lion's Arch or something where they get 150 people all in the spider tonic, all at max size and just bounce all around the city and do, like, a video of it just to show that it's not scary or weird. And, you know, their point would be, obviously, you'd be able to review, uh, to, uh, to say that, you know, these aren't as scary as the actual spiders and stuff. But I think that would be really funny to see. Like, people's organized to do something like that. Why would any audience deserve anything? Just let Arena Net do their thing and let that be it? Oh, God. I don't know about that, man. You're saying that a game developer should never be beholden to their own audience? Should never listen to their own audience? Should never interact with them? Really? Have you got an example of a game company that thinks in such a way and is particularly successful? And you might. You might. And what about this uh, this idea of let the money talk, let the money, let the market speak, right? Um, and we don't have to get too political with this, I suppose. Because Christ, I'm not the right place to be going to for that. But... What about this idea of, okay, uh, here's how we solve this. You release it as a skin or as a thing on the gem store. And if it sells, then it, it's justified its own existence. If you can sell that shit for $8,000, uh, $8,000, for 8,000 gems, sorry, 
And I picked that because that's, you know, a ridiculous amount. If you can sell that for 8,000 gems and people will buy it, then it was a worthwhile addition to the game. It has funded more development in other areas. And screw it. If people buy it, then go for it. And you know, that's an interesting discussion to go into with all, you know, stuff to do with microtransactions and games in general and so on. But what about that, guys? While his fears are valid, I feel he's coming off as an entitled person. Entitled to what? Oh, yeah, okay, and here's the other thing, right? So here's... A couple of things struck me when I read it. So here's some of my opinions. Um, personally, I, 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 I've I, told you guys I'm an unsympathetic person, and I, you know, I stand by that. I don't care about anyone else's fear of, of, of spiders. I think they'd get over it. I would be perfectly happy to put it in the game. I don't have all the facts, so I'm not going to say that's the way that the devs should act, but yeah. Um, but I think there are some interesting discussions in there. Another one that uh, came from that was... Um, uh, this idea of the money sacrificing, uh, sorry, money trumping all context. I uh, I might have talked about this on a stream recently, but there was a YouTube video. I talked about this a lot and I just cut it out because it wasn't what the video was supposed to be about. So I was like, fuck it. Because it was like a, it was a genuine ramble. I've just gone the wrong way again. I don't know. We might, we might only get silver again. Um... I don't know whether it was worth the video that I was doing it. But there's, there's a thing in gaming, right? There's a thing. And I, I suspect not just gaming, but I see it in gaming because, you know, that's where my life is, right? Um, and it's really amazing to see. And this 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 original comment leaves the, leaves the same sentiment out there. They say, I understand people will say I'm entitled here, basically, and that the company doesn't have to listen to me. But I bought the expansion too. And that's what I want to focus on. They say, but I bought the expansion too. I paid for this as well. Therefore, I should be listened to. And it's this funny thing where you can justify anything you want by debasing it to the fact you spent money on the product. And you're always in the... It's the customer is always right. And it's it's a, it's a hor horrible argument. I don't like it at all. But people always... Not always. It very frequently gets resorted to online. You can uh, pay close attention. See it all over the place. It's basically this thing of saying... It doesn't matter what you believe. There we go. We got gold that time. We did get gold. I got two gold chests here, as you can see. Uh, and voila. And we're 66 best today. What's lifetime best? So on my friends list. Wow, someone did it in 3 minutes 40 seconds. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. This guy did pretty good as well. 4 minutes 30, you want 4? See, I kind of want to get competitive about these. This guy here, this betrayed chalice, this is a friend of mine that uh, got really into adventures in HOT and going high on the leaderboards and doesn't look like he cares that much about this one. He's only 269 lifetime. Um, yeah, so it's like you, to, to take that to argument in another way, uh, you might find someone saying that Scourge is terrible, right? This is awful. The heal skill is awful. The F abilities are awful. It's not anything good. Uh, Path of Fire sucks. Scourge is shit. How are the devs so brain dead? I can't believe it. This is a horrible, horrible product, right? You might find someone saying that online. Um, and you might turn around and say to them, yeah, okay, all right, fine. You could argue that Scourge isn't bad, but let's say, you know, you, you accept, okay, Scourge is terrible. It really is. The devs don't know what they're doing. It is terrible. But you might turn to them and say, but it's just one of nine professions. Um, why not swap it out? Why not play a different one? I don't think it's fair to say to, uh, that Path of Fire sucks in general just because one elite specialization is bad. And that's where the, this is where the money argument comes from. The person can always, 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 always turn it around and say, yes, but I bought Path of Fire to play Scourge. I didn't buy Path of Fire to play the Deadeye. I didn't play pa buy Path of Fire to play um, uh, the Weaver. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I bought Path of Fire to play the Scourge. Path of Fire sucks. So you can always reduce it down to what your money supposedly went on in your own mind. Uh, and, you know, I discussed this on a stream quite recently because of the Griffin, right? Like, um, I think it's really cool the way they did the Griffin because, you know, nobody's complaining that it, Well, some people are complaining, but the, 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 there's not much of a complaint about the 250 gold cost and the collection and the time sink and all of that. People aren't whining about it because they didn't buy Path of Fire for it because they didn't know about it before. And it's like this beautiful thing you can see sort of uh, getting married together. It's an interesting way of demonstrating how the less information you reveal about your game before it comes out, the more you can get away with in design, I think. Uh, so anyway, and that's the whole thing. So we see it here in this discussion about the, 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 the spider, right? 
Um, I know people w w don't like me saying it, but I bought this game too, so my opinion counts. Always reduce it to the money. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that there's a, there's value in, in discussions like that? Do you think they get us to meaningful places? Engzak says the Spider-Man doesn't even sound cool as a mythical creature anyway. Utilitarianism, the greatest good for the most amount of people. So what what you say? But you know, and again, how do we judge that? Which it, what do you just out of curiosity? What do you guys think? Who is the bigger audience? People with arachnophobia or people who would like a Spider-Man? What, what do you actually think the the, the balance lies there? Okay, I don't think I've done this one, so I don't even know where it starts. It starts here apparently. Okay, the express parcel run. I might have done this one. I don't know. Ewindle says, no, we need more nerd voice. Read this in nerd voice. Ah, we need more nerd voice. Read this in the nerd voice. Wooden potatoes, please. Ah, please. There you go. Oh, I'll make myself cringe. I, what, what do you do to me? I'm a performing monkey. I'm a little more than a performing monkey. And I should be ashamed. I'm going to go work at McDonald's or something, guys. I'll see you later. Put in an option that disables the spider mounts. So that's another thing as well. You can kind of do stuff like that. I, I'm a big, I don't know. I, I don't I don't like that often. Oh, just add an option, add an option, add an option, add an option. I don't really like that. I think that that sort of becomes unwieldy quite quick. And it's sort of, um, that to me is when you're playing Monopoly and you get your get out of jail free card, right? And it's like, realistically, how often are you going to rely on that? I hate PvP. Does that mean ArenaNet should move PvP requirements from Legendary Grinds? I wish, but that's the way it is. Sucks for me. Well, they kind of did. They just let you bypass it all on the TP, right? <laughs> they kind of do acquiesce to people like you. Um, I'm actually so angry that that Choya over there has shot me. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Uh, you know what that- oh god 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 I need to scroll a lot. Wow, I need to scroll a lot. Alright, hold on. I'm not gonna play for a second. I love how you're fair and considering all sides and giving food for thought, but not proclaiming a hard stance. Yeah, I just want to have a discussion. I, at the end of the day, who really cares? It's just a spider mount. Uh, make a mount that can climb walls, never skim for a spider. Well, that's what I said in the original video that that would have been an interesting thing to do. Put in standard models for the spider so they don't look like anything on your client. Another deleted message? Are people angry? Uh... I have a huge and irrational fear of bees, like I freeze up in real life and run away. I hate them, but bees, wasps, and games don't scare me. In fact, it's quite cathartic to kill them. Yeah, I'm like that as well, actually. I, you know, like I said, I'm not the best with spiders, but killing spiders in Grimrock feels good. Here's my thought. I don't know if it's already been answered, but was it ever specifically said that the spider mount was cancelled specifically because of arachnophobia, or maybe it was one of many factors? No, it was expressly said. They said they went around the office, and they asked people about it, and some people in the office were scared of the spider, so they decided not to do it. I think that's what they said. There are mummies? Yeah, awakened varieties. Can you make a straw poll? If you have the... It, I speak to the mods, not me, but if you want to, yeah, I don't mind. There's women in this game and they scare the shit out of me. Oh, I believe that, man. Women? Oh. The fairer sex? Oh, I don't play... I don't play video games to deal with the fact... To address the fact I, you know, I'm terrible with the ladies. How dare they put in a, a female option at character creation? Oh, God. I just want it to be, you know, this is why Team Fortress 2 is my favorite game in the world. Because it's all about the bros, and that's all that matters. Ignore the fact I'm playing the lady right now, because she's a plant. She doesn't really have a, she doesn't have the, the, the bits that we're all thinking about. <laughs> oh, God. Go into a high place, or place with spiders as a choice. Someone walking up to you on a spider man you can't control. And again, I, it, we've already discussed that angle. Rot mouths are very creepy. You can avoid spider mobs, but not spider mounts. A lot of people are saying that, yeah, with the, the people thing. And again, though, that circles us back to the Halloween spider tonic thing. And what I said with the, the you know, the manta ray thing. Uh, you could have lots of spider mounts in one place, which you can't get away from. It's like a horror game. If it scares you, don't play it. I fear the dark. Cancel nighttime. I'm glad people are having fun with this. Fears are something that will be present at any point. If we remove something on the premise of fear, that doesn't really leave. I have a few friends who are afraid of dogs. Does that mean we should remove all canids from the game? What about the fear of tall objects? So is the argument in rebuttal to that that arachnophobia is something different? It's something special. And 
I hate to say this. I really do, because I don't like the idea that there's like this special snowflake thing that people can smell their own farts over because they feel this, and it's somehow that arachnophobia is more important than spiders and, uh, than, than any other phobia. I don't like acknowledging this, but I have to... Uh, I have to acknowledge that when I played like Grimrock, and it even happened on some episodes of X2, it's, it's, and even with Guild Wars stuff, people do, even watching YouTube videos of other people playing games, I'm no stranger to getting comments of people saying, yeah, WP, I can't watch this series anymore. Sorry, the spiders are too much. I can't watch it. It happens, man. It happens. It doesn't happen when there's like a dog on screen or something, but it happens with spiders. So what do we think of that argument? Spiders are special. Arachnophobia, I should say, is special. What's going on? Because I thought I could see the entrance to the adventure, and now I can't. Well, how have I balls this up so horrendously? Oh, it was here. It was at the last thing. Christ, I'm going to marker it. Like that. Alright, let's go that way. It's weird to see those old squad markers still in the game. <laughs> uh, WP was the perfect snack. Oh, the perfect snack. Oh man, listen, we could talk about that, but that's gonna be a hell of a that's gonna be a hell of a, a tangent right there. I think uh, there's lots of different criteria to choose a perfect snack. How moorish it is, how many you can eat, whether you want something that's really savory. Uh, whether it's like a cold snack, you know, like there's 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 a difference between snacking on like a bowl of mini cheddars, yeah, or snacking on like a chocolate bar, yeah. And it, uh, that's not just a sweet savoury divide that I'm going for there, but one's like you know you can keep shoveling it in your gob, and the other one's like a bar that you have in one specific portion, and then it's sort of done. Do you know what I mean? There's like there's different levels to it. Um. So yeah, we we will we'll, we'll <laughs> come back to that later. That will be tomorrow's. Oh, well, not tomorrow's. That will be the next big discussion. All right, I'm gonna quickly scroll now. We have spider pets who follow us. How's that different from mount says inks? Because it's rideable. Um, good question. I think the answer to that is because it's bigger. If it feels stupid, don't acknowledge it. Tail M says I feel actual pain not having spider mounts in the game. Baby rage. That's an interesting way of making the comparison of what's the difference between the phobia and the pleasure of having the mount. Would anyone even be getting grumpy at there not being any if the devs had decided not to have one? Good question as well. And again, that's I, th I don't think so. I don't think this discussion would ever have appeared in any capacity. Not that it's, it's, you know, there's hysteria over it, but I think it wouldn't have appeared in any capacity. But it's the fact that they scrapped an in-progress, like, working thing that's... And now people, because audiences are very weird. I, I can, I'm not a game designer. I'm not a, a, a very smart person, blah, 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 blah. But I, I do have a genuine insight for you all. Most communities, most people in the world have no fucking clue what they actually want. But once they are given an idea, they'll latch onto it. So, like, I can go online and I can say, what do you guys want to see in terms of videos? And most people won't really respond and they won't really think about it and they won't really know. Now, a lot of you guys listen to me right now will know because you're very invested in me. But with many things, it's like you can ask people to shoot in the dark and they won't really. But then you give them something pointed. Like, I could sit here and say, oh, guys, should I go, um... Do you guys want to see me do some Guild Wars 1 GVG? Should I do a stream on Guild Wars 1 GVG? A lot of you will hear me say that and you'll be like, yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, 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 I want that. That's cool. But you never would have thought of it without me bringing it to your attention first. Or very few of you. Like one guy says something about a pre-searing thing, which many of you might now be like, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. And the same thing here happens with the spider mount. Lots of it, now that they're aware it's a possibility, people like it. But that's not the same as it being so good they they would have thought of it anyway, right? There is a big difference. And most of the time, people don't have their own inspiration. They 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 wait for something to latch onto. Yeah, like me saying the GVG thing. Um, scrolling down. Oh god, jerking off to Adventure Time. We're ages away. You can look at the spider c uh, discussion through the money also. If ArenaNet make the spider mount, do I earn a ton from money? Yes, then use it to create more stuff, etc. So does it, inflicting arachnophobic relapses on people or whatever, is that justified? Because those people know they may be scared now, but the game could be better. <laughs> 
The plastic spiders are silly and toy shaped. What was bad with the spider mount was how realistic and uncannily it moved and behaved. I think you've got something there as well, though I also saw discussions of people saying, oh, they could just add skins where they're wearing happy shoes and they're making them really fluffy. And then people started saying, oh no, that scares me even more. I don't like fluffy, fluffy spiders. And now we start fracturing down the people with arachnophobia. And as long as one person is still in the camp of having declared that he's scared of it, apparently the whole thing should be shot in the head. Um, the simplest solution, if you're putting the spider mounts, is just to have an option that applies to standard model, client side. Have you found... No, I didn't do the timey thing, but I have read about it online, so... ArenaNet managed to mute the sound of certain legendaries just for the player. I'm sure they could manage... That's the get out of jail free thing. Scrolling down. More deleted messages from Elizabeth92. What's going on there? Uh, how do we know the spider isn't a secret mount, though, Kappa? Oh, what if it is? ArenaNet should just create the best game they can. Phobia should not influence the vision they have. But what if their criteria for the best game they can have is appealing to as many people as possible and having the largest mass market appeal as possible? What if to them that is the best game? And, you know, you can't argue that that's the wrong perspective to have entirely. And so then you have to, you know, think about it all. I think more people don't care than are extreme. Sure, for sure. Yeah, we're just talking about this for funsies. If your opinion counts because you bought it, so does mine, which counts as your opinion. That kind of thinking doesn't progress the issue. So that's talking about... Nengi. Here we're rating the nerd voice. In Western society, around 50% of men, 55% of women and 18% of men experience a, de a fear of spiders to some degree. It's funny you do that. You've just brought in the gender divide there. Um... Which is so irrelevant and we don't need to care about. However, going back to the original quote. This is a different topic, but I'm curious about you guys. The original quote ended with one of those stupid cat face things. You know, where you go colon and you put a three down. I always gender people who do that in my mind. You know how, like, most men on the internet will always assume they're talking to a man on the internet. And even a lot of women will always, like, default believe that they're talking to a man. It's like this ingrained sexist thing, blah, blah, blah. We don't have to get into. But I'll tell you what. One place where I do do that automatically, with fail, all, without fail, all the time, is if you type colon three and do a cat emoticon, I always think you're a chick. Instantly. It immediately. And not in, like, some rude, mean way. Or even a way that I really comprehend on some higher cognitive level all the time. It's just, it always genders it for me. I always think, oh, that's a woman that typed that. Always. And if I take a, a second and think, no, it, I, I question it and I realize I'm being stupid. But that always happens, like a switch. Check donations. Oh, gosh. And this will have been ages away. Well, so we've got scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. WP, remember to stand up to keep your circulation. I am standing up. I'm at a standing desk, man. Uh, thanks for another weekend of fun streams. You and all, man. Look at this boss. Dude, I'm starting to feel a bit weird. You've donated more than enough. Please, please, please tell me that you're rich or something. Thank you so much. That's really, really nice of you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the nerd voice. He's got a lot of scrolling to do, says Ink. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm allergic to peanuts IRL and peanuts in the game trigger me because I bought the game as well and I deserve to not be confronted with my death every day. Re slash S. I've noticed the streamers always tend to read the comments that are paragraphs. I just wanted WP to read this comment. So I decided to ramble on and keep writing. So he will read my comments since it's a very large block of text and looks potentially well-informed comment. But I guess what, bud? You're wrong. I'm in your head and you can't stop reading now. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, because most single sentence things are just crap. Uh, but isn't the Halloween tonic a toy spider? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a fair argument. Um, maybe there were more factors other than arachnophobia, for sure. But I mean, that's all we've got to latch onto for our discussion today. What if a model designer has arachnophobia and has to design one? Oh, well, I guess they'd shift someone around. The best snack, snack is Nutella on... Uncrustables? Up your snack game? I've never eaten one of those or heard of those. Uh, what function would a spider mount have? Couldn't they just incorporate oak heart essence into the game? Wow, the idea of a spider mount that flings itself on silk at warp speed across maps like that. I can imagine an animation with like its legs out in some like hunting predator. That's actually kind of creepy sounding. I like that. And of course, that means a lot of people would hate that. Uh, in psychology, fear of spiders is special in the sense that the human mind is genetically predisposed to be afraid of them. It's called the preparedness hypothesis. I have heard of that, yeah. Jesus, WP has scrolled 15 minutes back. 
Yeah, these streams are too big. I'm not even advertising the streams, but we get so much discussion when we do these things. It's kind of hard to keep up. I posted a clip link and it deleted all my previous posts. That's how it works. Oh, I see. I'm not angry at all, exclamation mark. All right, I'm with you. They should just make a Choya spider hybrid that eats babies. Everyone should be happy then. Then we got a ton of cat faces. Time to catfish WP. I used to think that. Then I made lots of fur made lots of furry friends. Oh, I see. I mean, I have had male friends who type like that, definitely. Um, no, there are these things called standing desks, guys. What the hell? It was a lie anyway. I'm not at a standing desk. I was just being antagonistic. I hate spiders in real life. The thought of them crawling on my skin gives me the shivers. I always kill spiders, but in video games, I've never been afraid of them. I always uh, release spiders. I can't bring myself to kill insects. I'm that sad. I don't kill insects, even moths. I, I'm really bad with moths and cream flies and stuff, uh, but I always catch them in a carp and let them out. All right, here we go. Mail delivery in the desert can be unreliable. We provide secure alternative for concerned citizens, but we're desperately short on couriers. Can you help? What are these parcels? They're stored in guarded caches. The sentries can't leave their posts. That's why we need couriers. So am I supposed to use a mix of Raptor and Springer on this? We're counting on you, she says. I'm gonna do it pure Springer first. And we'll see what we've got. And we'll go from right to left. So we're going to go all the way over there. Obviously, this would be better as a raptor. But I'm going to try as pure springer. Dude, there's literally three spiders in my room per day. Fuck that. Those fuckers need to die. Yeah, I just... <laughs> I have this weird, like, completely ridiculous... Like, I'm not a very faithful man, right? I, I have very little space... In my head, nor uh, I said this yesterday actually. I have very little space in my head nor my heart for any kind of faith or uh, leaps of belief or or holiness or godliness or any. I just have none of it really, right? And there's no judgment to anyone who does. In a lot of way, I envy people who do, but I just got no space for it. Um, however, I say I have no space for it. There is one completely ludicrous, ridiculous thing that I I sort of think, right? And I think, listen, if there is some kind of higher power. I, somehow, when I was younger, I got it stuck in my head. What if, right, you, I was ever taken to task by some, like, greater-than-me creature, right, that was looking down on Earth? Let's just call it an extraterrestrial. Let's call it an alien, right? And and the alien values my life. As, it doesn't care about the merit of me being a human being and intelligence as I perceive it and, you know, the how I'm different from other animals and insects and blah, blah, blah. What if it just paints with a broad brush... Life is life, right? And what if I am at the, the mercy of such a higher power, right? And it turns to me and it says, well, I'm going to treat you as badly as you treat other life because you're all the same to me. I don't give a shit. Oh, look, it, you've killed tons of insects throughout your life. So why shouldn't I kill you? And maybe a better way for me to des describe this is I am a higher power, right? When I am compared with a spider, and an insect. I am a god. I am on another level of existence. I can do anything I want to that spider, to that ant, to that woodlouse. I, I can smash it to pieces. I can, you know, I, 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 I don't understand it or its life or anything it does or its perspective of the world. I suspect it doesn't have one as rich as mine, so I don't care about it. I can do whatever the dick I want. And so in that position, I choose not to kill on the fleeting chance then that if something was in that position with respect to me i am now the ant and they are the higher power because i have demonstrated the capability to show mercy maybe they would show mercy <laughs> do you get what i mean does that make sense it's so stupid but like it's just a little thing um there's another way of describing it as well and it's like this, right? Like, it, it comes down to, like, statistics, which are weird and alien and scary and freaky to me. But there's, like, um, there's this thing of, uh, like, let's say an election is coming up, yeah? Let's say an election. And let's say you are, you're not very politicized, right? You don't like to vote. Um, uh, and you don't have any particularly strong p uh, uh, opinions about your local MP or how your constituency is being ran or whatever the fuck happens in your country and your flavor of democracy or whatever, right? Um, let's say you don't really. Now, if you choose to vote anyway, 
you might say, well, you're just one vote. So it does, it, you on your own can't change anything. But the fact that psychologically you have gone and voted, you now represent that everyone else in your exact frame of mind and demographic and life, right? Of which you're not going to be alone. You're not special. You're not unique. For, for every one of you that's out there, there's someone in a very similar situation. Because you made the decision to vote, that now represents the fact, actually, many other people found it in themselves to vote. And so you represent... Do you get what I mean? Do you get what I mean? I hope people get what I mean. And so then, like, with the, the, the Woodlouse God thing, it's kind of the same, right? Right? This makes sense on some weird level. I promise it makes sense, okay? And only the Enlightened are on the same page as Wooden Potatoes right now. <laughs> I hope people know what I mean. <laughs> But mommy says I'm special. You're not special. None of you are special. <clears throat> that may just work. Can I get a furry legged skin for the web throwing cark amount? <laughs> Enlightened uh, the Illuminati. Absolutely. All right. What do we get? We got silver, but we were quite some distance away from gold there doing that pure springer. Silver, yay. Okay, so we'll go for gold this time, as the stream title says. So we're going for gold. We don't have enough space to ride the raptor under this tree. All right, are we ready? Okay, so let's raptor through the fields. Now, if I drain all of my raptor endurance, this is something I keep wondering about. If I drain all of my raptor endurance and then I hot swap to the jackal and get on it, will he start with full endurance and I can go blink, 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 raptor jump, jump, blink, 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 raptor jump, jump. Can I do that or is that not a possible thing? WP aligned my chakra and now I'm uh, enlightened. He starts with less but barely. Sexy swap, shared endurance. Ah, that's a shame. I think that would have been really fun. Don't you guys think that would have been an interesting way for the devs to have done it? Did I fall down this chasm before or did I make the jump? Bellahar says, yes, you can. Oh, but the mounts have the same bar. Any opinion about the lack of variety in adventures for Path of Fire? Yeah, I've talked about this. I, 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 I lament it. I think it's a shame. I prefer the Heart of Thorns adventures. Uh, I understand why we're in the world we're in, though, because uh, people, people didn't care about adventures, let's be honest. Shit, I've gone the wrong way. This is actually bad now. I, I think I've made such a, a terrible mistake here that the only way I could be saved is if this sand portal gets me high enough. Yeah, this is bad. I'm going to reset this one. Uh, actually, how easy are these to reset, though? Hmm. Yeah, fuck. Getting on the rapture is not going to speed this up. Yeah, do you think it's good? Well, uh, the person there says because adventures give no rewards. I mean, again, like this is what I'm talking about. The beating heart of Guild Wars 2, right? Um... But in Heart of Thorns, they did give rewards. They were some of the best way to get mastery points, which you needed because the fucking story was even gated by getting those up. So people did adventures, you know? Um, it was really important. And what did ArenaNet get met with in that? Real meaning to do them, at least on the first instance, repeatably so. Obviously, they did a terrible job um, because it was all account bound and uh, let's not go there. But... Um, at least in the first instance, they were required. In, it, not required. They weren't even required. But they, they were skirting the boundaries of being required. And what resulted from that? People whinged. So this time they've like just stripped all rewards. I mean, that's really part of the fire in a nutshell, isn't it? It's There's just as much content and stuff there. But they're so scared of being accused of grind and long-term goals. There's nothing like worthwhile that's rewarding for a really long period of time. Oh, you can just click the X in the adventure window. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's very cool. All right, let's redo this then. Because yeah, that would have just been a big waste of time. All right, let's go. I'm quite happy I didn't get gold instantly here, though. Uh, 
I mean, so Ink says, and now people are complaining that... that well, let's remember that it's... They are different communities. Uh, that often comes up with things like this. It's a different group of people that are upset with Path of Fire than the ones that liked Heart of Thorns. I mean, I have a very... You know, I, the whole elitism thing. Here, here's one of my probably most snobby attitudes. Um, and I want people to stay chill as we discuss this, all right? Prove that you can do it, guys. What do you think of this, though, right? You know the whole, oh, Guild Wars 2 has to appeal to casuals, blah, blah, blah. If you have to pick an audience, right? So right now, the, there are people who want to play more of the game that are upset because there's no long-term rewards, right? Um, if you're going to pick a community to, to uh, offer things, right? To listen to and to provide for. Surely you should uh, listen to the community that want to play your game as much as possible. Surely that community is more important than the community simply seeking extremely fast stuff. Because the people who are seeking extremely quick access to rewards and blah, blah, blah. Surely those people, often branded casuals, surely they shouldn't be so highly prioritized. Because all they want to do is get in and get out. And fuck off and go back to, to PUBG or go back to GTA or go back to, you know, whatever's just come out. So surely if you're gonna pick a community, you pick the no-lifers. Um, and that's a perspective, uh, a very elitist, rude perspective. I, I, I feel like you get, you got, you sort of get uh, attacked quite heavily for saying that. But I must, I have to be honest with myself. I think that there's some, some real logic in what I just said there. So what, what do you guys think? What, 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 what are the strongest grounds to, to disagree with what I just said there, right? What, what is it? I'd love to hear what people think on that one. Because there is a big thing in the Guild Wars community. It's like, no, casual is king. Casuals are the kings. Casuals are the one that need to be listened to. It, you're, you're a piece of shit if you ever look down on them, right? Like, and I don't think what I just said is necessarily looking down on them. But it attacks them, certainly. It attacks the merit of listening to them. Um, you know, and I can understand this this community being upset hearing stuff like that. So let's grab this as well before we go. I think I've picked a better route this time, sort of. Someone said, well, the thing is, if you want uh, the game to be, you got to tailor it to your greatest demographic. But so, yes, there's like, there's, but there's different things. Which demo is more important? The very wide one that disappears quickly and flashes in the pan. Or the very narrow one that nonetheless is quite deep and sticks about for a long time. Do you get what I mean? Like, the greatest demographic. What do we actually care about? Do we care about number of accounts? Or do we care about hours of playtime extracted from those accounts? Yeah? And I think that the actual answer is hours of playtime extracted from those accounts. Who gives a shit if a million different people played Path of Fire if they only played it for a week? I would take 250,000 people playing Path of Fire for um, for six months than two million for one month. Do you get what I mean? Like, so I, I, it's not quite uh, number of people does not is not does not describe the full thing. So here, I think I've got 10 seconds before I miss gold. It's right here. So I think I just missed gold again. This is good, actually. This is this is raising my opinion of the adventures significantly. If I've missed gold here. <gasps> Come on. I mean, people play bad. I play badly. Let me just put it that way. I play badly when I'm streaming because I'm focusing on completely different things. Oh, no. We got gold. Never mind. Oh. So let's see what people are saying on that one. You care more about the accounts that spend the most gems. That's an interesting thing as well. Like, it might be fun to believe that the flash in the pan people don't spend many gems, but maybe they do. I think your perspective of long-term players is not necessarily what long-term players are. Yeah, I mean, and there you've you've hit something interesting as well, because there's a lot of people who, uh, like, have maybe 500 hours in Guild Wars 2, and... Um, and they consider themselves experts on the game. They might have even very publicly reviewed the game. Uh, they'll consider themselves players since launch. 
you know, but they have 500 hours and, you know, that's a lot by any regular game standard, don't get me wrong. But, you know, someone with 5,000 hours, uh, I don't know, I think my, in a lot of ways my perspectives are probably really fucked up. Because dare I say that they're, it's common to have 5,000 hours? I mean, that's just, I know that that's wrong. I know I should never say that. That's absolutely ludicrous, right? But a 5,000 hour account, is that not worth 10 um, thingy accounts? What do you think, guys? Because we also can't deny the existence of people who have like 10,000 hours in Guild Wars 2 and they've never bought gems. I bet that there's a couple of people out there. I bet that's not a non-zero population. I'm in an interesting position because I came to this game as a casual and liked that it was different from other MMOs. That's what got me into the door. But then I started liking the game more and more and now I'm that man I wish Path of Fire had more things to do crowd. So I can't answer that question. I mean, the, the, the dream is for any MMO developer that everyone is like you, right? Everyone starts as a casual. Yeah, what you just said is a bit of a non-comment to be honest. Nobody starts as a non-casual. Not unless they're this weird kind of breed of nerd that takes themselves and their leisure time in games too seriously such that they'll go to a game saying i'm gonna start playing this hardcore i'm gonna visit it and i'm gonna be a hardcore player instantly like to me that's just like a weird psychological thing that's just odd uh generally speaking i would say nobody comes to a game as a hardcore player we're all just testing the wards when we go to a new game I mean, when you get to, like, esports and people who specifically move to a game with the intent of forming a team to be professionals, I think maybe there's something in that of saying you never were a casual, but that's, uh, I think that's very rare, right? Who spends more money, the casual player or the hardcore raid every week fracked on everyday player? Good question, Inks. Maybe that's all the day. And again, that takes us back to the money talks argument, right? I don't work this as well PvP or Raid, so in that case I'm a casual, I guess. However, I work for everything I get in the game and I have about 11,000 hours on your account. That's crazy. You're an 11,000 hour player and you still call yourself a casual? That flies in the face of what I said a second ago. I reckon that, you know... Where do you guys think that the end of the bell curve is? Where do you think it starts being rare in terms of hours played? So, I don't know, if, if I haven't described that well enough for all of you, um, think about this for a second. I have 50 hours. Hi. I'm Billy Bobby the Noob, and I have 50 hours in the game. Am I rare, or am I the common player? Think about that. Is Billy Bobby the common player? Okay. Maybe you say he is the common player. All right, fine. All right, I'm, I'm Silly Solly, and I have 100 hours in the game. Is he common, or is he rare? And then Timmy Tammy has 150 hours. Is he rare? What about the 250 hour player? Where's the line? Where is it when we can start saying, all right, these people are no-lifers. These people are hardcore. Is it a thousand hours? Is that right? A thousand? Two thousand hours? I don't know, man. Because uh, I think you have to cull certain accounts out as well of the metrics. Because there's going to be a lot of people. You know, and you can see this on Steam as well, right? Like, it's like... You get the achievement for being the tutorial of a game on Steam, and you look at the percentage of people who have it, and it's only like 20% of the players even have that. 20% of the people who own the game don't even have the first achievement. That's going to be true for Guild Wars as well, right? Like, something like half the accounts out there never got to level 20, or some shit like that. That's going to be a thing. And it will be different now that the level 80 boost is there and stuff. But like how, you, so you have to cull a, a, a huge chunk of things away because they're just not worth looking at. And it's deceptive to look at them. And I think I've, that's kind of gross if, if, you, if you do look at them. Um, do you know what, that would be really ugly as well. Tinfoil hat time. Let's put on our Tim 4 hats. Here's a really gross thing. Imagine this. Um, ArenaNet wants more funding and support from NCSoft, right? To, to develop Guild Wars 2 further, blah, blah, blah. NCSoft are saying, yeah, I don't know, man. Your churn rate's too high. I'm looking at your stats. Most people don't even get to level 10. I don't know, guys. I don't know. So then ArenaNet adds tomes to the game and they start selling level 80 boosts in the gem store and stuff and it's not because it's good design and it's not because it's xy you know uh, uh, on any level the best thing to do 
but it's because it allows them to have more deceptive stats about the number of players that reach level that, that reach level cap at which point they can now be declared as real players for metrics and the game looks better to their investors right or their publishers imagine that imagine how and i'm not saying that's what happened and i'm not saying that you but imagine that isn't that just one of the grossest things you can imagine Jesus. To even realize that that's a potential to me was quite striking. I simply don't understand why there isn't a place for both playstyles in Path of Fire. And why they went from one extreme to the other. Yeah, we talked about that a bit yesterday. Depends on hours per day played. You know, and one thing struck me as a YouTuber. I don't know how... Um, how common this is across different industries and things. But when it comes to getting brand deals and when it comes to people wanting your attention and all these things, people do seem to mishandle statistics. Terribly so. Like, people look at sub count and follow account. Who the fuck kept... Like, I'll get, I will get comments from people and outreaches from people. Oh, I've noticed you have over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Who gives a shit? Don't look at number of subscribers. That doesn't mean anything. Look at viewership per video. What are you doing? This is such nonsense. But people are afforded all these ridiculous opportunities based on, like, phony stats. And it's like... You don't have to be an expert on YouTube to understand how flawed it is to offer people opportunities. But... It's, it's crazy and you see that everywhere why is this a thing and i wonder if that's really prevalent not just there but i mean you might say you know youtube and all these things they're sort of new industries and this sort of, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens all over the time that the statistics are mishandled um so ink says what about efficiency i guess or someone says he says that it's a terrible metric for hours played I think no life depends on hours for available to play minus four if a streamer. By the way, I don't know where this adventure starts, so I'm just gliding around on fogging stuff to see. I think it might start the skimmer camp. According to efficiency, 50th percentile of playtime is 1,500 play hours. Although more casual people won't have gone on the statistics, so it's probably a lot lower. That's really high. What do you guys think? Is efficiency a good metric? I'm at 10,000 plus, and I missed most of Living World Season 1. This reminds me of FF14, who boasts they have 10 million accounts that played, but some statistics say that almost 9 million of those accounts never even hit, like, level 20 or so. I am what I would one would call a casual Guild Wars 2 player, and even if... Like, there's just funny things. With the heart... Another thing, like, in general gaming, yeah, over here, look, uh, that strikes me as well is... There's just basic facts about games that should be considered with reviews and with purchasing decisions that consumers still and publishers still never just think about, never include. Like, I'm sorry, but, and this is not a particularly uh, original comment I'm going to make here. You would have heard this in a million different places, but it's absolutely right. And it's it's farcical that it's not true. Um... Hours take, average hours taken, predictive hours taken, whatever, length of game. This, in some form, no matter how flawed or, you know, what body it is that decides that or so on, no matter how... That shit should be on the box. And it should have been on the box since the mid-90s. And it's crazy that, like, it's not. Do you know what I mean? And again, that's not original, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. But, uh, you know, little things like this, it just sort of shows, you know, certain industries are just in their infancies. And there's just, like, such smack-bang obvious things that should be happening that just aren't. I'm trying to interact with the flag and I can't. So, we can't continue to feed and provide for our skimmers without supplies from the outside. Can you retrieve them for us? Where are these supplies? We sent ranch hands out to gather together everything we need across the region and they're expecting us to send someone to pick up what we they've collected. They'll help you. Uh, sorry, will we, will we help? Okay, we can try. Let me just quickly scroll. It depends on how many years they played. I have 1,500 hours and we'll hit my third year mark in six days. Congrats, man. I watched an old video today where you predicted the first expansion. It made my blo my mind blown four years ago. Oh, dude. Uh, you shoot, you throw enough at the wall, eventually something will be right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that as a mind blow. Uh, I think that the comparison of time, you, you, how, wait, what? I think that the comparison of time, you, how casual you are, become less when you look at an MMO as most casual players look at it more the log of a couple of hours, couple... <gasps> 
Sorry, he never put a full stop and I had to eventually breathe. As a couple of time a week, but could have more than 10k hours played compared to someone that only has 500 hours played, but plays five plus hours played every day. Full stop. Dutak, I'm not quite sure what you said there, my friend, but your name is very close to Dukat, who's an interesting character from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, so you have my fondness. Have I discussed the core Tyria way Waypoint Unlock Pack from the Gem Store? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. Actually, I haven't. I haven't thought about it enough to know what my opinion is on it. For now, I don't have one. Sorry. Uh, who cares about Twitch subs? Look at VOD numbers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think VOD numbers are... Uh, they at least get... Do you, Are they more... I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't more important than followers. Sub count is good if you're just trying to get them to sell out. Casual player. No, but I believe you get companies that see oh, 100,000 subs. And the channel itself might be getting like 100 views nowadays. Each video. And it might be spamming out terrible stuff. But they see 100,000 subs and they think that they're going to get a return on investment by giving that person free stuff and whatever. It's mental. Casual players or a good deal of players won't go to a site like Efficiency. I agree. That is the downside of Efficiency, of course. There's other stuff in this as well. Uh, different discussion, really. How do you guys feel about the fact ArenaNet don't reveal the st raw statistics about certain things to the community? Um... Now, it's obviously standard industry practice to do that and keep those things close to your chest. But the only reason to keep things close to your chest is suggestive that they don't look good, right? They don't want you to know how few people play. They don't want you to realize that more people are in world versus world than PvP and PvE combined and stuff like that. They don't want you to know these things, so they keep them hidden. Uh, what do you think about that, guys? Is that bad? Is that good? Is it their their uh, prerogative? Uh, 60 US dollar game plus 20 US dollar DLC plus 50 microtransactions, 20 hour playtime, no replayability. <laughs> um, I think he was trying to say he needs Tree Fiddy. The problem with Path of Fire for me isn't lack of content, but the content itself. All the metas are so un underwhelming compared to Heart of Thorns. The adventures suck ass. There's no raid wing preview, and there's just lots of boring books to read and stuff. Love lore, but hate reading. Uh, you are like the anti-me, I think, Cal and DB. You are quite far on the opposite end of the spectrum. Ooh, what order do we do this one? I'm going to go this way. I'm going to get this flag last. It's closest to the thing, but we have to do a loop, essentially. So we'll go pure skimmer first, and then we'll skimmer slash raptor, I guess. Slash Springer as well? I don't know. WP, have you gotten the Destroy Additional Pylons achievement from the Path of Fire Act 3 story mission? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure. I thought that was going to be a Stellaris question for a second about if I had a certain achievement in that game. Sounds like those kinds of achievies. Is this making you guys cry inside that I'm doing these adventures which require the swapping of mounts? And, you know, under time pressure, and I, and yet, I am still refusing to bind mount keys. Does that make you guys happy? Oh, man, he managed to hit me. Maybe we can just glide up anyway. <gasps> oh, come on! Yeah, baby! Such skimmer ranching action. You disgust me. I used to read lore, but then I discovered WP's YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you, man. Now you get weird lore with minor factual inaccuracies and slight jaded and uh, slight biases. and It's lower quality now, but you get to hear it in a, uh, a British voice. And isn't that what it's all about, ultimately? Hmm, this is actually quite interesting. I will agree for what, it, for what it's worth that these adventures, like I said earlier, they're not as good as the HO2 ones. Have you done the Cleanse of the Galaxy of Xenos achievement yet? No, I have not. Did you just Google that? Uh, I haven't played a Xenophobic Empire. Actually, I played one, but I didn't get very far. The AI is pretty tough uh, for me because I'm not very good at the game. So, um, I'm currently just waiting like 
hours and hours. And I have a I have an empire the size of the whole galaxy, basically, and I've won the game. But I'm deliberately waiting to max out my unity so that I can build a ring world, so that I can get the ring world achievement and then start a new campaign. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. The most recent achievement I got was building a habitat uh, in, uh, next to a black hole. There's an achievement called View of the End of the World, uh, which I got most recently. WP YouTube Licky Love. Oh, we got a, a, a Licker Troll um, fan in chat. POF law is amazing, though. The voice acting is pretty great when you're watching NPCs or doing dynamic events. Yeah, I've, I really appreciate how good the open world lore is as well on this one. I think that has a lot of worth. Okay, I think I'll do a slightly different route next time as well. Oh. Yeah, we only got silver. We never got gold. We were 11 seconds off. So, using the raptor as well, I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. Um, actually, no, I think going high first is a good idea. I'm going to go a slightly different route, but not majorly different. Um, I'm going to go top left first, basically. Oh, look, this water is interesting. I wonder if uh, there's, like, sand pools that really speed up. So, I think if I climb this, this hill first, I'll be able to more gracefully float down. I think that will work really well. Oh, I should have been on the Jackal here. Genuinely, I think the Jackal would have been really nice. Because all this climbing, I could have used the, the uh, ability more frequently. Oh, oh, it's a sand pit. Uh, look, this is more interesting than I was given a credit for. So we have to go around unless I wanted to risk swapping onto the skimmer there. There is reason to get on the skimmer. This is why I wanted to do this. Because I think this is quicker, coming down this, like so. And we don't even have to use the springer to get onto that either now. I think this is a nice route. And then it's just like, it's all smooth sailing. When we get to the watery areas, we can just be on skimmer. From then on. Uh, time for work. Thanks for the great stream. A lovely discussion. Have a great night. Uh, it was great to see you, man. It was really great to see you. Uh, I hope you have a nice shift, dude. Oh, you fucking wank face. God damn it. An earth gin out of nowhere. Just... <sighs> Come on. Break, 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 break. Thank you. Right. We can grab this. Now we just go cut along the last three and we should be good, I think. Why did I get a mobs? And then Bogger managed to unmove me from that range? Jesus. Never put me in combat, interestingly. Um, I'll stay on the skimmer here because, I mean, swapping for the raptor to do one... Uh, maybe we could have made the leap, actually. But don't forget, we get the nice speed boost when we're on waterways. This one's here, and hopefully we made the right choice. Come on. Come to Papa. Good. No need of a springer on that one. feel like this was an efficient route, but maybe... Little too much um, skimmering rather than raptoring. Hmm. I'm gonna raptor it back now. Okay, and if we make this leap here, Ugh. <gasps> no, the tree bumped my head. Oh, we missed it again. And by a lot. We missed it by a lot. 12 seconds. They're getting harder. This is nice. This one first, then the same as you did seems the safest route. Wow. Maybe, maybe Sandwolf then. Wow, this is actually... Jesus, 20... Um, a wank face cost me the venture. Yeah, I did get attacked. That's true. I was I was struggling to think where my improvements could have been there. Hmm. Do you think there are still some undiscovered things in PRF? I doubt it. 
I mean, uh, well, actually, I, I want to find the, all the swinging boys. And I know there's one. I don't know whether there's more, though. I don't know whether Tirza did every single map and she put a swinging boy in every single map. Uh, this adventure is the hardest one, but the desolation is a joke. Yeah, I did the, the, the desolation one already in first time, and that's what gave me the impression these were really easy. Because I would have thought that in the desolation it would be harder. Uh, do you have all the raid wing achievements and CMs? What area would you like to see in the next raid? No, I don't have uh, Samarog nor Demos CM. My group's not very good at Demos, and uh, Samarog we've just not tried really. But those ones, uh, I don't have. So I'll try... I, I guess I'll go the same route. If nobody's got any advice, I'll go the same route again. Oh my god. Get out! Get out! Get out! Not enough space! I'm sorry, what? Not enough space to mount standing next to that. We're redoing that. That's annoying. Let's not have a shit opening. Hmm. Or maybe I should skim her at the start. No, we'll just avoid the deep water. Oh. It's already on the mount. I didn't even realize. So let's just do this. We'll find that sand portal somewhere. Seemed okay. Now, where was that sand portal that we saw last time? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, come on. You weren't supposed to do that, man. That's annoying. Oh, I'm playing badly. <sighs> go, go, go. The teleport. Oh. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, which guild do you want raid trophies in? Um, I think we have all the gold trophies in Spud 1, so if you want to put them in any, you can do it in uh, Spud 2. Alright. Oh, why does the jackal keep spawning facing that way? Let's try again. <clears throat> There we go. That teleport you just saw right there, that's where it's better than the raptor. That was kind of perfect example of the slope. The raptor would not have climbed that slope as comfortably as that just did there. I'm going to try coming up this way. Yes, we have to brave the, 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 the lion of doom. But I think uh, if we do it like this, this might be a bit more, more comfortable for us. Come on, you! It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Oh. I, I really think it was the skimmer for us here because to go around this, this quick sand pool, it's like... Hmm. Now it's the wank wall. Uh, no, I, I don't have the griffin, guys. That's the point. I, I'm not making a point to not use it. I don't have it. And actually, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I probably wouldn't... Uh, and we, we're poisoned. I'm redoing that again. That's so annoying. Now this worm's attacked us. Uh, maybe I should go a different route. Or mm, has the jackal really worked out? I might try another route. Uh, but yeah, if the, if the griffin just deliberately cheeses this entire thing, then that would be an example of why I don't like, or what I wouldn't like about the, gri the griffin, sorry. Let's just try this. I mean, the raptor is nice, like. Uh, I've just realized I'm skipping one of the ones. It would do, it's the idea I want it to be going over here, right? I don't know what that was. Like, I should get this one first. Shouldn't be going straight to that other place. 
Right. <clears throat> we'll go up here. Right. Now. Alright, this is good. I like this. This is good. Very smooth. Straight onto this, where we get a movement speed buff. Okay, good, good, good. We're in combat, but it doesn't matter. Straight over this. Okay, good. Quality. Right, now the wolf's probably best getting up here, but we're poisoned and we're going to be in combat for ages. So, I think instead we'll just sort of... Oh, I actually see this is so good for the skimmer. This entire aspect of terrain. This is all really nice. All right, we're, we're, we're going to get on something faster here, though, on the way back down. All right, there we go. <clears throat> and then back onto the skimmer here. That was probably useless, but this is what I wanted before, right? Uh, we're going to drop really quickly so that we get to the, this, so that we can buff fast. Move quickly. We got that. And then it's just cutting across the bottom. So if this doesn't work, it's a very different route I need to take, I think. Um, I'm going to go back onto it now because... Um, it was this weird rocky thing here. So then I just need to go north, right, after this? Oh, do you know what? The sand wolf might have been really good there. <gasps> oh, almost never made that. Oh, just about. Oh, my gosh. We just squeezed in. Uh, so, 2 minutes 30 was the time. We got 2 minutes 18. So, that was pretty quick. That was actually pretty good. We came in uh, 12 seconds faster than we needed to there. Um, that was a pretty jammy end. But, yeah, not too bad. I like that one. That one was good. I at least had to think about it and do it a couple of times. That's that's adventures to me. You know, uh, one attempt, bronze, essentially. Second attempt, silver. Third attempt, gold kind of thing. Like, that's still, by comparison to the Heart of Thorns ones, really comfortable. Uh, that was 14th best in the entire day, by the way. And only eight seconds slower than sixth place. So it wasn't too bad. Sorry that the discussion completely died while I was doing that there. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess the thing that the griffin would be good for here is jumping off of this and then warping over to, like, there, maybe. But after that, and then and then you would climb this, and then you could probably use the griffin to quite hastily worm your way. If you could use the griffin to go all the way around, but that's probably a bit idealistic. I don't know, I like that. I mean, just, just by virtue of the fact that was a good one for the skimmer, right? So, just because of that, um, it's going to be good for the griffin as well. Because uh, they overlap quite a lot. Here we've uh, got a portal. I wonder whether this would have been nice for the adventure. I wonder where this takes us. Do you think this takes us straight up to the supply thing? Is this the su- Oh no, this is a lot higher. Oh god. Alright, fine. Um, so yeah, Desolation's next. I've already got gold on Desolation. And I just did it. Just I, I think I just ran around on the Raptor as it was at the time. And I got it first time. So I will... Uh, play it nonetheless, as I did the other ones that I already had. The other one I already had gold on, and uh, we will we'll see how we feel. Someone said I went the same direction as you and got gold. Good job. Such intense music. Yeah, I like the uh, the music in these. Rumor has it the quarterly balance patch will be coming tomorrow, along with the Halloween update. Do you think the possibility could be true, or is it too soon for a balance update? Uh, no, I don't think it's too soon for a balance update. Why would it be too soon for a balance update? Um, no, I think it's fine. Good, good way of spicing up Halloween as well. Um, if, if, even if they don't have any, you know, lots of tangible content in there. Uh, Griffin does suck on this one, apparently. The, the Jackal and the Rapture are the way to go. The same route that I did. Thoughts on the Weaver now that it's been out for a bit? Um, I think it's, it's, it's very strong damage-wise in raids, but it's very limited in many other capacities. I'm looking forward to them buffing uh, the sword. Oh, it's night time. Okay. Right. So.
So we're going to want that adventure down there. Oh god, we've been streaming for ages already. Man, we're already at two hours. How is that a thing? How are we already at two hours? I've done three adventures. Do you guys fight? Do you guys think I'm a slow player? I mean, I know we, we do a lot of chat on streams. I am a slow player. You don't need to answer that. I know that. But still, man, it feels like... um. It takes a long time to get anything done while I'm streaming, does it not? Oh, gosh. I mean, we did okay, though. We got we got a couple of goals I never had before. Not particularly slow, says Bergo. Hmm. Don't bully the Scourge. It's never soon to, too soon to nerf Scourge. Uh, the, the, the thing with the, the, the Scourge nerf, though, is it's like a question of how that nerf is executed, right? And that's what's interesting about it. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion time today, Inks. You're right, there was. There was a lot more today. Stream time got stolen by arachnophobes. No, I think that was good, though. What do you guys think? Uh, for real now, do you think we should eat stream? I can try to take... Because there's always comments. It could be from Reddit, but it could be directed at me. I could take a comment. Whether I agree with it, disagree with it, doesn't matter. But something that is an interesting thing to talk about that will stir the pot a bit. And, uh, and we can sort of present it. I might even put, you know, actually screenshot them and put them up. What do you guys think? Would that be fun? Shadowcat says you don't stream long enough. Man, I do more than streaming though, so... I mean, it's nice to have you and all here, giving me a fiver each time. He's made sure, at least, that each of these streams this weekend has been well worth it. <laughs> but, uh, realistically speaking... Talking to a fraction of my audience is not as worthwhile as talking to my whole audience on YouTube. Do you think there were... Do you, did you think, ever think near the release of Path of Fire that there was too much content? Um, near the release? You're saying before it came out, did I think there'd be too much content? Uh, no, I don't know. What, what is too much content for an MMO? What is that? What Too much content is... For gaming in general, I guess what too too much content is, is too much content is when it takes so lot. there's so much to get through, there's so much to do, that by the time you, your players are reaching the end, they're fatigued by the core gameplay loop you're presenting to them and experience you're presenting, and they're just bored of the game itself at its fundamentals before they've even finished the story and blah blah blah. Is that too much content? Like again, Divinity is a fun thing as well. It took me 24 hours to get off of the first map. And it's interesting to think, what if it took... What if then I go to the mainland and there's like a week of gameplay on the mainland and then finally you go to another continent? And it's like, at what point is too much? At what point is it too long? At what point is it just, you know, the, the fundamental feeling of playing Divinity and Divinity's combat and this RPG will just bore me to the point I don't want to see the story through to the end. And that kind of happens, you know? Um, so it's a fun thing to think about, I guess, with an MMO as well. An MMO never wants you to leave, though. I mean, that that itself, that's an extraordinary thing to say, isn't it? An MMO never wants you to leave. Does Guild Wars 2 want people to leave in its desire to cater to casuals and say it's okay to come in and out? Does it want you to leave? I don't know the answer to that question. And I honestly doubt the devs know the answer to that question. I doubt they have a unifying response to that. Why am I being shot by that? What do you guys think? Does Guild Wars 2 want you to leave? Is it okay to play for two days when a Living World patch comes out and, and then uninstall? Or, you know, when an expansion comes out and uninstall, otherwise just a little bit of Living World? Does it want you to leave? And, and here's a, a better question. If your answer is no, it doesn't want you to leave, which I think is perfectly reasonable and, you know, so on and so on. If your answer to that is no, the next question is, was it always that way? Were they happy for you to leave in 2012? Did they anticipate people to leave? As many as did? Was that always built into it? The adventure starts over here. Have you had any chance to play Holosmith? I really feel they dropped the ball by a lot when they didn't include heat mechanics on any of the other weapons. 
than sword, especially considering how limited they are for this class. Yeah, I think that would have been nice. Um, I don't know whether I'd describe it as dropping the ball, but I think that it would have definitely elevated Hollowsmith. And I think that when you look at Soul Beast and Weaver uh, and their treatment, I think that it's very fair to say that Hollowsmith should have had that, especially considering we're talking about the Engineer. It's not like it even has that many weapons, right? Um, so yeah, it wouldn't have been hard to put something on the rifle, on the pistol, and the shield. I can't think of a sort of design reason to have not done it. Um, and you know, the, the, the issue, if we want to call it that, is exacerbated by the fact that sword's just not that interesting. All right, we're going to do one, uh, attempt at this. And if we only get silver, fine, but this will be our attempt at this. And, uh, next stream we'll, we'll carry along with this. So, the last time, I literally, I just walked towards the various flags I could see, and I got it. And we'll see what we got with the Raptor as we go. Don't think they necessarily want you to leave, but they allow you to leave without losing too much content, progression, story. And this is a plus point for those who like to enjoy other games or don't always have loads of free time to play it. Come on, please let me mount before uh, that thing shoots me. Why can I still not mount? Why? Why, 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 why? I'm redoing this. I got dismounted because I hit one of their mine things. So that's just bullshit. Let's go again. And watch the floor. I feel like I'm in a RAR again. This one. I remember when Hollow was like... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I can't look at chat while I'm running through this minefield. Hold on. Don't hit any of the tar mines. There we go. Okay, so what was that? Uh, oh, and now it's scrolled off. Rip. Is an MMO never wants you to leave different to an MMO wants you to never leave? Uh, no, it's just uh, different syntax. As far as the English language is concerned, I don't believe that there's any difference there. Uh, in the meaning that's implied. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. I completely forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well. Maybe someone will prompt me. Ink says you get locked in combat for too long on some of these things. No, I think that that should have been punishing. I think that's good. Because that's uh, easy to play around. It's something to focus on. It, it adds a little bit of a different experience to the adventure. I'm happy with that. I really am. Because A-OK. -okay. So I need to get up there somehow. <gasps> oh. Man, I really want to go through that sand portal. I bet that there's a really fast, efficient way of doing this one with the sand portals. It's a shame they never locked gold behind it. Come on. Come on, Rappy. Come on. <gasps> oh, that was pretty swishy. And then one more. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. We're going to have to spring of this. This is not the route that I took before. This feels a lot clunkier and slower than I was anticipating. Come on. Is that for real? Thank you. He's under the bridge. How high under the bridge? Are you really, really? Documents acquired. And now we've got to get back. And it's just over there. This is where I'm going to get attacked. Oh, the dodge. I know you guys like that. That evade was so good. Oh. Okay. And then back to the Springer again. Oh, you son of a... What the... And it wastes my endurance. They, I know you can stand there, you stupid rabbit. So that was 20th best all time today. And that was gold. Gold was asking for 4 minutes 30. I did it in less than 3 minutes. So we ha we were over 90 seconds quicker than we had to be there. So uh, look all the experience you get as well. It's obscene. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's gold. 
And I obviously was playing really weird and bad there, in my opinion. Give me some trade contracts, okay. Oh. And uh, yeah, so there you go, that's some adventures. I guess all we've got left is the Vavi adventure and the Vavi meta. And then that's a pretty, uh, pretty good look at uh, the pre-Griffin Path of Fire experience. <laughs> Of what worth this has been showing you all, I don't know, but there you have it. Um, and it's been pretty fun. Again, I enjoyed all the streams this weekend. I thought they were all really, really, really nice. Yeah, that gold is too easy. Yeah, it's way too easy. And again, I kind of had a, quite a bad a, a, opinion of these because I did the Amnoon one and got an instant gold. And then the only other one I'd done was this and I got an instant gold. And so, I, it, yeah. I don't know why they've done that. Like, there's no mastery point behind it. It's, again, too often arena net double dip, so they go too far with it. And the really sickening thing about this is if they make... They, they will never make stuff harder. They'll nerf the archery shootout. They'll nerf this. They'll nerf that. But they'll never make things harder because there are people in the community that would never let go of it. And it would just be a pain point forevermore. And it's unfortunate because it gets in the way of decent design. Uh, so they messed it up and the mistake's been made. I think that so far all of these have been too easy But I think the one in the Ellen Riverlands was all right <laughs> The one in the Ellen Riverlands is the experience I wanted in Amnoon and then I wanted it to step up from there There's three of them in value anyway, so but, but my opinions don't count right now because I haven't done the Griffin ones So I want to see I know that I can, so do much says you can bind a different mount for every key uh, Really that's interesting Maybe this is the precursor to infantile mode in raids. Ha! The Griffin ones are not that hard, but they're a bit harder than the normal ones in POF. Okay, says Bacons. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to seeing that then, Bacons. I'll take your word for that. Uh, oh, yeah, so the guild upgrade. Let's have a look, Seize. No, we don't quite. We're slightly shy on the Ethereum, unfortunately. It's probably like another hour away before we've got it. So that sucks, but we will uh, do it all in due time. There is no rush, of course. No wooden potatoes. No matter how good the Griffin ones are, that doesn't change how disappointing these ones are. Sure, but, you know, uh, my comments there were kind of a broad thing. I can't say all the adventures are bad if I haven't played all the adventures. I think that, you know, that's, that's a fair thing. I'm happy I made your streams more enjoyable. You do, man. I mean, it's pathetic, really, but it's nice to get a donation. It is nice. <laughs> and anyway, and it's not just you that's donated. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for all the cool discussion. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope we've all had some funsy stuff. And hopefully I'll uh, get uh, back to some more decent YouTube videos for you all because throughout these three streams this weekend, I've just been taking it easy during the day. And uh, I'm not quite sure what to think about all of that. But yeah, uh, it means a lot to me that you guys came. Uh, don't forget about Discord, and I will see you all very shortly. Uh, I hope you guys all have a nice one. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more streams, you can click a follow button that's on there, and you'll get like an email or an alert or whatever when I go live, and um, you can always know when that's happening. So yeah, more fun stuff in the future, guys. Take care. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.